Today is a massive day for Ethereum. The long-awaited Ethereum ETF is set to go live this week as soon as today at the time of publishing this video. And many investors anticipate this to be a massively bullish event for Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, with price predictions from 10, 15 to $20,000 per coin in the next 18 months. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the Ethereum ETF launch and analyze exactly what can happen to the price, you know, as a blockchain developer myself, who works this technology on a daily basis, who's been in this space for many, many years and a long time ETH holder. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And well, there's definitely some good opportunity to make long-term gains in the crypto markets. The absolute best way to make it in this space is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And I can show you how to do that step-by-step and start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So let's look at the Ethereum ETF that's anticipated to go live this week, probably today at the time of releasing this video, because we just got an official statement from the New York Stock Exchange that they've cleared the listing of the Bitwise and Grayscale Ethereum Trust Spot ETFs for trading on July 23rd. So obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is gonna be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. But all signs point to the Ethereum ETF going live today. It may already be live at the time this video gets published. But in order to understand how this could impact the price of Ether, you have to understand the fundamentals that would make this happen, okay? So it's useless to just have an off-the-cuff price prediction if you don't have solid reasons why it could do that. So the first thing you have to understand is what is an ETF in the first place? Well, ETF just stands for exchange traded fund. Okay, so this basically is a way to buy cryptocurrency through more traditional means rather than buying it on a cryptocurrency exchange through a derivative product called an ETF that's listed on, you know, just normal brokerage accounts. So you might think about buying gold. If you were to go out and buy gold, you're probably not going to buy physical bars of gold. You're going to buy a gold ETF through a brokerage account, which is just a derivative that represents physical bars of gold somewhere else. That's exactly how crypto ETFs work as well. And if you're new to crypto, you may not understand what a massive historic deal this is. People have been talking about crypto ETFs ever since I got into the space, and the conversation goes well beyond a decade prior to today. Now, we got Bitcoin ETFs earlier this year, and after these ETFs went live, the Bitcoin price rose significantly. And it's almost poetic that we're seeing the ETH ETF launch this week around Ethereum's 10th birthday. See, the Ether ICO started in July 22nd of 2014, and here we are in July 23rd of 2024 with the ETF probably going live. And so these ETFs are locked and loaded because as soon as these things go live, they are ready to start trading. And we'll probably see people buying Ether through the ETFs on day one because there's eight different issues, including BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise, ARK Invest, et cetera, et cetera. And the exchanges are supporting these things out the gate. ETFs are probably going to be available on exchanges like Fidelity and Robinhood. And if history repeats itself like it did with the Bitcoin ETFs, they will see inflows within hours of them going live. Now, you might have to ask yourself why, okay? We have plenty of cryptocurrency exchanges out there. Why would people buy through an ETF and not just go buy it on an exchange like everybody else has been doing for years now? Well, there's lots of reasons. They don't have to worry about self-custody. Uh, they don't have to worry about an exchange blowing up like we saw with FTX back in 2022. And there's lots of incentives for tax advantage accounts uh, like 401ks, Roth IRAs, where you can get exposure to cryptocurrency through those means, didn't have a lot of good vehicles for in the United States prior to this going live. So that being said, you know, if history repeats itself, the Ethereum ETFs, if they act somewhat like the Bitcoin ETFs are, and people are ready to hit that buy button and exchanges are ready to, you know, roll out support on day one, what could happen to the price. Well, again, it's not financial advice. Nobody's got a crystal ball to know exactly what happens, but we can make some educated guesses. So let's start off with the short term. So I'm going to categorize the short term as the next few weeks. Okay. So now that we have some fundamental analysis set before us, we don't have lots of other things to compare this to except for the Bitcoin ETF launch. And if we think that the ETF launch for Ethereum will look somewhat like the Bitcoin ETF launch, we have to know that 
this doesn't mean that the Ethereum price is going to go up right after they go live. Okay. In fact, the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price dipped between 10 and 15 percent uh, post ETF launch in the short term. However, it went on to go much higher than that, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So we could see a similar thing happen to Ethereum. Uh, it's not necessarily the case, but the point I'm trying to make is we should expect volatility around the go live date. Okay. We could see some downward price action, but I do anticipate that to resolve to the upside for the medium term. Now, this is largely going to depend upon the Ethereum inflows, okay, in terms of the people actually going in to buy it and also the outflows. And you can keep track of those uh, on this website, farside.co.uk. They've got, you know, Bitcoin ETF uh, records, and they've also just launched one for Ethereum. And so you can track this in real time. So that's a short term, but what about the medium term? Okay, so I'm going to consider this period from like now till the end of 2024, okay, so the end of this year. So to do this, let's look at what happened to the Bitcoin price during that time period, you know, post ETFs going live, because Bitcoin ETFs launched about six months ago, and we have about six months uh, through the end of this year. So in the medium term, Bitcoin rose about 50 to 60 percent of its price prior to the Bitcoin ETFs going live. So initially, I said it dipped about 10 to 15 percent, but then went on to go do a 50 to 60 percent increase in the price that it was before that dip. So if that happens for Ethereum, that could push the price north of about five to $6,000 per coin in the next few months, maybe by the end of the year. So could it go even higher? Well, to do this, uh, we have to look at the supply demand economics of Bitcoin versus Ethereum. So if we look at the projected demand, all right, Galaxy Research suggests that, you know, there could be a demand of about a third, okay, of Ethereum ETS relative to Bitcoin because we're not going to say the same amount of money is going to flow into the Bitcoin ETFs as the Ethereum. We expect there to be less demand for Ethereum ETFs uh, relative to the same demand of these two cryptocurrencies, but Ethereum is a smaller market cap. So even if it's a fraction of that, then it can still have an, a significant impact on the price. So they expect to be about a third. So given that, you know, to date, Bitcoin seen about $15 billion worth of inflows in the ETFs. And if you calculate that over the entire year, so roughly double it, and then you take a third of that, that means about 10 to $12 billion on an annual basis uh, could be flowing into the Ethereum ETFs. So that could support the price that I'm talking about, make it roughly go even higher. So that's the demand side, but what about the supply side? So you have to understand, you know, uh, demand isn't for all the Ethereum that's in existence, it's just for the Ethereum that's for sale or the ETH. So only a small portion of that ETH is actually on the market and for sale because around 7% of ETH is just lost or completely dormant. Uh, about 27% is staked. Uh, and additionally, about 11% is locked into bridges, 11 to 12%. So a large percent of this ETH is lost, locked up somewhere, you know, not for sale. That doesn't even account the number of people for who, who are just holding the Ethereum who are not going to sell it. And on top of that, Ethereum is now deflationary. So with all these factors in play, the demand being roughly a third probably of what the Bitcoin ETFs are going to be and the supply being even more scarce than what Bitcoin is relative to that demand, we could definitely see a price of five to $6,000 per coin, potentially even higher inside of 2024. So what about the long term? Okay, that's the medium term. What about the long term? Well, I'm going to consider this time period to be through the end of 2025 or the end of the extended crypto bull market, assuming that we actually continue to get that or whichever one of these periods happens first, okay? So we have much less data to go off of in order to make this type of projection. We don't have Bitcoin ETS that have been trading for longer than about six months at this point, okay? So, you know, we, we, don't, we can't compare this length of time in price history for an ETF product for crypto. But we can look at a couple of other assumptions to extrapolate what could happen to the price. So we're going to first assume the crypto bull market continues, that it's an extended cycle uh, like the ones we've seen in the past. And we're going to assume that the crypto market reaches roughly $10 trillion at its peak in terms of total market cap. That's what lots of analysts are projecting at this point. Who knows what the actual number is going to be, but we can just use that as a starting point. All right. So if that happens, what could happen to the price of ETH? Well, we have to look at what the Ethereum market cap would be at that peak or around that peak. And so in order to do that, we can look at the ETH market cap dominance. So in the last bull market, ETH got to about 20% dominance at the peak. All right. 
Now, assuming that peak roughly corresponds with the peak of the total crypto market, you know, we can tweak these variables slightly, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with this type of analysis. So back in the last bull run at 20%, this was the Ethereum market cap, and this was the Ethereum supply, which, you know, was a calculated price of about $5,000 per coin. So Ethereum was not far from that. It was about 4,800, 4,900, depending on which exchange you traded on. All right. So if we extrapolate those same types of numbers, if we get a 20% dominance this cycle, all right, at a $10 trillion market cap, that would put Ethereum between sixteen and $17,000 per coin. All right. Now, those variables may not match up properly. Maybe we don't even get a market cap dominance of 15%, or maybe we do get 20%, but it's not at the point of peak market cap. So those numbers could skew a little bit either direction. So even if we just go on the lower side of things and look at a 15% dominance, all right, that would still put Ether at $12,500 per coin. And on the high side, if you go up to 24% dominance, uh, that would put it at $20,000 per coin and everything in between. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What price is Ethereum going to hit after these ETFs go live in the short term? Is it going to moon? Is it going to bust? What about the medium term? Are we actually going to see it increase? Are we going to see some type of black swan event that takes the entire crypto market down? Or are we going to get this nice, you know, free ride into a bull run that lasts the next 18 months like a lot of people are hoping for? And if that's the case, how high is the price of ETH actually going to go? I want to hear from you. And whenever you're finished leaving your comment, make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And while there's definitely some good opportunity to make money in crypto over the long term, the absolute best way to make it in this space is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.